they shall see God. What a glorious thing it would be today to see God. To see God in everything that you do. To see God in every circumstance of your life. See, God, Jesus said, God, my Father is always working. God is always doing something. I don't think we need, you know, a lot of times we pray that God would do something. Right? God, do something in my life. I want to see you do something in my life. And God's saying, I'm <coughs> doing everything I determined to do. I am not falling short on what I promised to do. I have, you know, from the foundations of the world, I've prepared, you know, uh, good works for you to walk in. You realize that? Isn't that an amazing thought? That an eternity ago, God crafted good works for you to walk in just today. They only show up today. They will never show up again. They've never been there in the history of the world. And they're only going to be here today. And it's our choice to walk in them or not. And then tomorrow, it's not like your rollover minutes. There's no rollover works. <laughs> you know? They're, they're fresh. They're new every morning. And God's got a whole new host of good things for you to walk in. God is powerfully, purposefully at work in your life today. What we need to pray is, Lord, help me see it. Give me the purity of heart to see you, to see you at work. We often talk about filters. Right? You say, oh, that's just your filter. Right? What's Jesus saying here? Blessed are those who have no filters on their heart they'll see God. Nothing blurring, nothing clouding, nothing coloring their perspective of life. When you, are, when you have a heart like that, you see God. Wouldn't it be glorious to have God remove all your filters today? All the negative filters, all the pessimistic filters, all the discouraged filters, all the prideful filters, all the angry filters, all the hurt filters, all the greedy filters, all the lustful filters, all the deceptive filters, all the insecure filters, all the doubt filters. Wouldn't it be great not to see life through all those filters? Amen. And just to see it as God sees it? That's what Jesus said. If you've got a pure heart, take joy because you're going to see God today. You're going to see God at work. You're going to hear his voice. There's going to be a connection with him that is so clear and, and, and concise and profound that it's going to take your breath away. It's going to captivate your imagination. I don't know how many of you woke up today with a captivated imagination. Anybody even know what a captivated imagination is? I love blank stares. <laughs> right, this, this sense, you know what, what's an imagination? You know, you come play with my kids. They have the most gorgeous imaginations. Everything, you know, it doesn't matter what Jackson is holding in his hand, it's a rocket. You know, he can make a rocket out of a sandwich, out of a pea, out of, you know, uh, a stick, uh, his sister, you know. Whatever he's got in hand becomes a rocket. And he's off on some, you know... You know, today, you know, and, and he's out to save the universe every day. Right? And he's accomplishing it. Right? That he wakes up and his imagination is just boom. What could ha what could, could today be like? And as adults, we kind of get beaten down into pessimism. And, well, today is going to be like every other day. And often that's because we don't see God. My scriptures read, well, not my scriptures, I didn't write them. The scriptures read, Blessed be, Psalm 73, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel who only does wondrous things. God doesn't do anything mediocre. He leaves that up to us. Uh, Psalm 73, let me help me out, 20, Psalm 73, get a concordance. Uh, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel who only does wondrous things. God is only doing miraculous, wondrous things today. Isn't that extraordinary? Are you seeing any of them? Did you see any from yesterday? Did God do anything wondrous in your life? What's the answer? Yes, because he only does wondrous things and he's always at work. Right, so he had to have done something wondrous in your life yesterday. 
The question is, do you see it? Do we see it? <laughs> do we see it? And if we don't see it, then what's it an issue of? Filters on my heart that keep me from seeing God and keep me focusing on things other than Him. We're going to, and then the last one, blessed are the, the peacemakers for they shall be called sons of God. Um, blessed, are, well, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called sons of God. This will come to play a lot as the semester progresses. Uh, being in an environment like this with a hundred other people, you're going to offend each other. You're going to step on each other's toes. You're going to do things. I'm going to say stuff that's going to offend you, uh, usually intentionally. Uh, <laughs> and it's not, I shouldn't say that. I, don't, I never. I always get bummed when I offend people. Uh, I like to, to, to challenge your thinking. I never want to offend you. Um, but I want you to, to, to get shaken sometimes a little bit, turned upside down. And sometimes I, I push the boundaries a little. If that happens, just come to me and say, hey, what you said really hurt my feelings. Right. Let's make peace about it. Instead of just holding those hurts in our hearts, right? grudging, begrudging people because of the hurts that we've experienced. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they're called the sons of God. See, in God's family, he doesn't tolerate broken relationships. It's not okay. I know in our world we tolerate, you know, relationships are disposable like everything else. Right? If I don't like you, you don't like me, we'll just part ways and, you know, I'll find some new acquaintance. And it's really not that big of a deal to me because none of my relationships are really that deep. Right? So you are disposable in a lot of ways. Is the thinking of our culture where the sons of God recognize that, no, it's family. And that's one of the challenges of family is you're stuck in them. Right? You don't get to pick and choose who your family is. They're just your family. And, uh, I've got to stick with it, you know? And so you get the you know, conflict in your family. What do you realize you ultimately have to do? Either be miserable for the rest of your life or make peace. And so as things happen, and they will happen, they will happen. Somebody will sit in your seat and you'll be all bummed. <laughs> and don't make peace. Somebody will, will say something that's thoughtless. Somebody will do something, you know, there'll be, you know, coffee and muffins out, and somebody will take the last muffin, and you know they've already had seven of them, and you, know, you haven't had any yet, and you're like, oh, that rotten little, you know, so-and-so. And, uh, just learn to let love cover a multitude of sins. And when your brother sins against you, go to him. And say, hey, let's make peace. Remember the, the goal of going to your brother uh, over an issue of sin is not to vent on them, but to win your brother back, to get the relationship back. I think Jesus said, if your brother sins to you, against you, go to him. And if he hears you, you've won your brother back. That's always the goal, is to get that family relationship restored. Not to say, oh, you're such an idiot, I need an apology, you hurt my feelings, you're such a jerk, you know. But to say, hey, you know, this, this really affected me. And it, I feel like it's put separation between us. And I need to talk to you so that I can have a clean heart and clear heart towards you. Wouldn't that be glorious if we just had the maturity to do that all the time? And learn to actually build significant relationship. And then blessed are those who, persecute, who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. <coughs> Closing it out. As you step into this lifestyle for the next five months of seeking his kingdom first, it's going to be hard. Your boss might persecute you. Uh, if he does it too much, come see me. I'll tell you how to talk to your HR manager and get that result. Uh, that's illegal in our country. Um, but there's going to be opposition. There's going to be challenges, conflicts in your life. Recognize this is part of being in the kingdom of God. You can take joy. When you don't fit into the world system, that's a good sign. It's not a bad sign. It's something you can take joy about. Because it means you're finally fitting in to the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. We pray for you. Father, thank you for the opportunity and the privilege to be a part of your kingdom. I pray that you would help us take joy today. To not look at, at things through clouded uh, negative filters, but to realize that we're embracing your kingdom. And if we're lacking self-confidence, if we're 
grieved over those that don't know you, if we're um, giving up our aggressive and forceful ways, we can take joy. And I pray that you would fill our hearts with a great sense of joy today at the privilege it is to be your children and to be part of your kingdom. Let that joy be our strength. Let it be what fuels us. Give us that deep hunger for righteousness. Help us to to clean up our our spiritual diet, what we bring into our mind and our heart and our souls. That we could truly hunger after you. That you would be the thing that really satisfies. And we trust you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.